I'm a bit late on this build, but that's because I have quite a few ideas that I want to get out before the season ends. The following build focuses heavily on arc bolt grenades that have a few usages here and there, but this time we'll be making and using Lucky Raspberry to its fullest and allowing the progress grenade regen effect non-stop. It's one of those exotics that sounds good on paper, but has never really been able to shine in the thick of things, and this was ultimately tied down to the subclass itself. Now with the update, we can really show off how well the exotic is with this in-game arc on the build. Now, if you love Shinobu's Val, then you're gonna love Lucky Raspberry after this. So if you guys like the content, then why not leave a like, a sub, and turn on your notifications for more content like this in the future, as I would really appreciate it. Now, making Lucky Raspberry viable is rather simple if we follow our last build we did based around Shinobu's Val. Both exotics are similar in design, with one allowing you to have two grenades on spawn, and the other one allowing you to get a full grenade back upon 3 plus kills. As the arc subclass has been updated to really lean into the dual effects, this should be simple and easy to achieve if you know exactly what you're doing and you know the right stats plus mods to add on. So here's what I went with. We have flow state where defeating a dual target makes me amplified. While amplified, our dodge ability charges faster, reload speed is greatly increased, and you become more resilient while dodging. We then have Tempest Strike where sliding on the ground and then using your melee sends a vertical arc wave in front of you. For Fragments, you'll want Spark of Ions where defeating a jaw of targets creates ionic traces. Spark of Resistance where being surrounded gives you more resistance to incoming damage. Spark of Shock where your arc grenades jaw of targets. And Spark of Beacons where while being amplified, your arc special weapons on kills can create a blinding explosion. For stats, we have 70 Resilience, 18 Discipline and 16 Strength. For key mods, we have Battle for Wealth for plus 2 worlds created, Font of Wisdom for a plus 15 intellect, Elemental Ordnance for creating worlds via grenades, World of Life for a brief boost to health regen, and Seeking Worlds for Elemental Worlds to track to you. I have noticed a mistake with the build, with World of Life being on the key mods list, as it can't function without a solar world to boost it. In this case, you have two options. You can add on an explosive wall maker and have a kinetic grenade launcher to aid with producing them. Or you can get rid of it and add on the Thunder of Might mod for a 25% damage buff to your arc weapons. Both choices are good to pick and to use for the following. Now, back to the main topic, the build will follow closely to our Shinobu's Valve build and pretty much be a near copy to copy in design. With this, you'll be able to get around a 50% grenade energy back if you have Demo, Weld and Lightning Strikes Twice mod attached to the following. From there, once Raspberry's effect kick in, you should then gain around a 20 to 30% boost if your grenades kill, but don't outright meet the requirements for a full recharge in the process. All of this alone will pretty much cement the build with allowing you to always have a grenade on hand after the first one is done. For weapons, you have quite a bit of choices here to pick, as any arc weapon is fine to use if you have at least one weapon with demolitions on it. Take my example. I have the Sweet Sorrow AR with triple tap and demolitions available, and it's one of the most effective arc ARs in game that everyone should at least have. Its high rate of fire is perfect for reducing combatants health within a few seconds, and ease of use allows both older and new players to easily master it within a few games. Although it can be used in PvP, its use of screams more for PvE and the results are there to see. With the following combo of perks, it allows the weapon to build up grenade energy swiftly, while also acting as a good DPS weapon against bosses to many bosses alike. The overall world weapons not only destroy arc shields, but also act as the main backbone for the build, so you can use your grenades and weapons without so much of a hassle involved. On the other hand, if you get the tarnished metal with demolitionist and vault shot on it, then that's also worth keeping because of how strong its two perks combos are. For heavy, we have Grand Overture Heavy Machine Gun as it's something I've always wanted to use, but never really had the option to do so. Now as the season is arc focus, I can use that machine gun with glee and let me tell you, this heavy machine gun is actually really good in endgame when used against bosses or champions. If you build up your rocket stack and unleash them against a boss or champions, you can either take off a huge chunk of health in the process or outright kill them with a few rockets to spare. It's one of those weapons that is highly overlooked because of Thunderlord's usage, but if you do get the time and you already have one, I would recommend you invest in the weapon and catalyst and use it when you get the time too. For your stats, Discipline will be the only key stat that needs to be near maxed out or properly looked into so you can sustain it for long. 
It makes sense that for a grenade build you will need to heavily spec into it for the best results. But you can also have a low stat of it if you have the needed support already in place, such as a grenade focus perk and mod, etc. At 80, we have Demolitionist, Lightning Strikes Twice, Iron Lock Traces, and Elemental Wells, all abiding and helping your Arc Grenade to sustain for longer. Even missing a grenade won't be so bad as the following will help you get it back within a few seconds. And this is also great when your grenade connects but doesn't outright get the kill which you may see with the build. With Jolt, we can do a bit of extra damage to the side which should help with getting those one shot grenade kills. As do remember, Arc Bolts aren't as great when used up against Mages to Ultras alone. They are fairly weak on their own and they do need that extra boost of support to make them just good enough to cause a noticeable impact. However, since you'll be killing red bars pretty much often, you can get away with this with this little impact on gameplay. We then have Resilience which is at 70 and this is a good spot to aim for if you don't have anything else to spare. You can go higher or lower if you wish, but as long as you have the spark of resistance fragments available, you should be fine to leave it here. And then of course strength at 60 isn't really anything you need to invest in, as the armor used has led to it. You will be using your melee quite a bit to become amped, but outside of that, I wouldn't recommend you bump it up too much, just to a reasonable level. For the leftover mods, we have Harmonic Cypher mod for allowing us to create orbs of power via magic elemental type, Ashes to Asset for building up super energy via grenades, Absolution for spreadability regen via collecting orbs of power, Heavy Machine Gun mod for increased reserves, and Amped Up for becoming amped for longer. Now, with the main basics covered, let's take a look at the mods we are using and how they play within the build. Go ahead and pause the video to take notes. For our head, we have Resilience, Ashes to Assets, Harmonic Siphon, and Bound for Well mod. Arm, we have Resilience and Frontal Wisdom mod. Chest, we have Discipline, Film Shot Plating, because of Dampner, and Elemental Ordnance mod. Leg, we have Resilience, Heavy Machine Gun Scavenger, Absolution, and Well of Life mod. Cloak, we have Lightning Strikes Twice, Amped Up, and Seeking Wells mod. My experience with Lucky Raspberry has always been mixed since its first introduction in Destiny. When the Art Bolt effects works and chain to multiple targets for a free grenade refill, they're great and really enjoyable to use. But when used against a single target, they tend to fall apart because of how restrictive the exotic becomes. You have to use the exotic against multiple groups of enemies to get the most out of it if you ever want to see them useful. And thankfully, we have quite a bit of content in game to where this is possible. As the Ark subclass is now officially updated, we have more options available to mess around with it. How this build works is a lot more better to what was given before Ark became viable in the long run, such as Elemental Worlds now allowing you to have more grenade ability energy on demand, rather than relying on just your subclass and perks for filling in the missing rest. Then you have the seasonal mods such as Lightning Strikes Twice that will grant you a further boost to your grenade region speed. And then of course the subclass itself with key fragments such as Spark of Shock and Spark of Ions providing further support. So when you get down to it, your Zotic won't feel wasteful to use against a single target as you'll at least receive a substantial amount of energy back in return. Would this make this Zotic a S tier in terms of functionality now that it has an easier way to activate its trait? Yeah, and thanks to its jolt effect, this one small but very handy addition allows you to use your grenades similar to Snowy's Val, which can be relatable. I can even vouch for its uses in GMs and raids, as these contents tend to have a smaller pocket of combatants that rely on their numbers to push you back. One simple grenade now can disperse and destroy them in one go. With the return of such an exotic in game, it shows that quite a few of them were being held back by the subclass itself because of their lack of customization for enhancing their gameplay. It's fun to use now, and of course it will be fun to use even when the season ends, but I don't see this becoming really commonplace since there are better options for Arc Hunters available. To the point, the build fills in the Arc Bolt niche that has been long outstanding for it, and now it could become truly better with the long anticipated Arc update. Now is a great time to give this Zotic a try if you ever want to find a reason to give them a try in both PvE and PvP. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter for more Destiny content and banter. Once again, thanks for stopping by, stay safe, and I'll see you all next one.